Good morning, everyone. This will be a very brief and general introduction to FRBR 00. Um, and to, be, to begin with, um, why was this model, FRBR 00, created in the first place? Well, um, as things happen, at the end of the uh, 1990s, uh, two communities, the museum community and the library community, uh, provided themselves with uh, conceptual models. In 1998, a preliminary version of CDOC CRM, uh, the CDOC conceptual reference model, was released by the ICOM CDOC, International Council of Museums, um, International Committee for Documentation. And uh, in 1997, uh, the IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, uh, approved a conceptual model named FRBR. Uh, the acronym uh, stands for um, Functional Requirements for Bibliographic Records. But by now, we have realized that uh, uh, this name has become quite old-fashioned, and we are trying to find an, a new name because uh, it's, it's getting more and more outdated today to speak of records. So we are trying to find a new name for that. So since these two communities, uh, which are communities for uh, memory institutions, cultural heritage and memory institutions, since these two communities had their own conceptual models. In the early uh, 2000s, the question uh, arose, why not talk to each other? Why not try, if not to merge the models, at least make them compatible? And this is the reason why um, a dialogue um, working group, an international dialogue working group, uh, was formed in order to see whether it was possible to uh, have um, an overview of these two um, conceptions of the world. The difficulty um, lay in the fact that although both museums and libraries are memory institutions, which makes them similar in a way, there are important differences between the types of cultural heritage held by these two institutions. In museums, you have mostly or mainly unique objects, uh, statues, paintings, and so on, etc. Uh, but in libraries, you have mainly copies of publications, things that are not in themselves unique, but in one library and in another library, you can find two objects which, of course, have their own uh, identity, but uh, they, have the th they share the same content, they share the same circumstances under which they were produced, which makes them um, similar for the use that um, um, people who come to libraries uh, are supposed to expect from these items. Of course, you have exceptions. Of course, in any museum, you can find objects which are not unique. For instance, uh, art prints, um, uh, they, they are produced um, according to processes that <coughs> is a bit uh, analogous to the to industrial processes uh, used uh, in, in the book industry. And in the same way, in libraries, you also can have uh, no, unique uh, objects. But this is, very roughly speaking, the, the big picture. Uh, mainly unique objects and mainly copies of publications. So we had to find, we had to develop 
a model that had to accommodate for both types of description for it to be regarded at, as a common model for the two types of memory institutions. So how do the models um, relate to, to each other? Um, I won't go into all the details of uh, both FRBR00 and CDOC CRM here, but of course you are welcome to have a look at the definitions of these uh, two uh, models. But just roughly speaking, once again, um, there are two notions that are very important uh, as uh, some kind of glue between uh, FRBR00 and CDOC CRM. You have the notion of type, which is very uh, important. In CDOC CRM, um, objects are not simply unique. They are also uh, gathered, clustered by their type. Um, of course, you have one Greek amphora. It is, as such, a unique object. And you have another Greek amphora, which is described as a unique object. You have a third Greek amphora, and, and so forth and so on. But <clears throat> all of them are gathered under the, the overall notion of amphora, which defines a type. And similarly, uh, in FRBR00, uh, the notion of publication is modeled as a specific type of type, if I may say so. Uh, the type uh, or uh, exemplars of the publication belong to. So this is one aspect uh, of the way CDOC CRM and FRBR00 relate to each other. Also, an important notion is uh, the notion of processes, uh, activities. Um, in CDOC CRM, things are not regarded as just being there. They have to come into being, either naturally or artificially, through the activity of human beings. And so this was an important aspect also um, in, uh, when developing FRBR00. In the original IFLA model, FRBR, things are described as being there and not as having produced. But also in FRBR, there is the notion that things are related to dates. And the, the mere fact that there is a date in, in the description of a book, for instance, is an indication that there is a process, that there is an activity of producing the book, of making it come into being. And besides, from a formal uh, po point of view, FRBR00 is an extension of CDOC CRM. What does, in, what does it mean to be, what does it mean for a model to be regarded as an extension of another model. Let's have a very generic uh, example. It's, a, it's an abstract uh, example. You have one model here, and a model consisting of classes, C1, C2, and so, uh, et cetera, and properties between these uh, classes. And then you have a second model which is regarded as an extension of model A if and only if it, um, uh, if it has a, 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 certain, a, a given uh, number of um, re requirements with regard to the first model. So first, any class from the second model has to be a subclass of a class from the first model. So in this case, these three classes are declared as subclasses of classes that belong to the first model. What does it mean to be a subclass of a class? It means that any instance of, uh, sorry, of this class has to be also an instance of that class. For instance, a rose is a rose is a rose, of course, but in addition to being a rose, it also is a flower. So if I have here a class for all flowers and here a class for all roses, any rose can also be said to be an instance of flower. But a daffodil will be an instance of 
the flower of the yes of the flower class, but not of the rose class. And also, for B to be uh, regarded as an extension of A, you also have to declare that any property specific to this model has to be either a sub-property of a property from the first model. Um, what does it mean to be a sub-property? It means, so P4 here is declared as a sub-property of P3 because it is declared between two subclasses of the, um, the first model, but it's not sufficient. Uh, this property also has to be uh, semantically um, included uh, within this property. Or another possibility is to declare uh, a property which is a uh, the result of a chain of properties from either the first model or the other model. So, for instance, you have a property declared here between this class and that class. Um, and it is regarded as a shortcut or a chain of the properties which are declared in the first model here. So, in this case, we have one model, for instance, CDOC CRM, and a second model which consists of specific classes but also the superclasses for those classes, and a number of properties, specific properties, but also properties that were already declared in the first model. But as you can see here, those classes which belong to the first model but which are of no use for the extension, do not belong to the extension. So this is the reason why some uh, classes and properties from CDOC CRM are repeated in FRBR 00, but not all of them. We all only reproduce the definitions of those classes and properties from CDOC CRM which are of any use to us in FRBR 00. So now for some uh, applications of FRBR 00. This is just a very quick list of other projects that made use of FRBR 00. Uh, you have HUSIT, which is an ontology for canonical uh, citations. Uh, which was uh, developed uh, at uh, King College in, uh, in London. Uh, you have uh, SOS, which, uh, if I remember well, is uh, Sharing Ancient Wisdoms, uh, which is an anthology for very specific types of um, medieval uh, manuscripts uh, containing excerpts from ancient texts, which is known as a nomology. Uh, Press OO, which was already uh, mentioned by Martin a few minutes ago, which is a conceptual model for, in uh, librarian's jargon, uh, continuing resources, that, that is any kind of uh, either periodicals, weekly, uh, quarterly, monthly publications, or a book series also. Uh, this is a European project which is called Biblissima, it's a, digital, it's a project for a digital library for medieval and Renaissance manuscripts and early printed books. And the metadata for that digital library uh, will be developed on the basis of an ontology, which in turn is also an extension of FRBR 00. And this is a specifically French example, uh, which is called Dorimus, uh, which is a linked data project. It, it is only uh, in its uh, infancy, it, it is only beginning uh, right now. But it is a, a linked data project for heterogeneous genius metadata on specifically musical resources. So, so as you can notice from this uh, list, uh, all these uh, applications or projects uh, remain pretty much within uh, uh, are 
are limited within the library domain. And what is missing, what, and what we hope we will see very, very soon, um, is a real project for the integration of museum and library uh, data, and, and library information. Because after all, that's what FRBR OO was developed for, to make uh, the two communities talk to each other. So we hope that in a not too remote future, we will see projects uh, that actually use FRBR OO as a way to have museum information and library information um, work together in, in um, in a world more, in a more unified world. Thank you for, for your patience. And I now leave the floor for, um, for Stephen.